Hello, we're going to make a little robot in Maya as a way to learn the interface. I'm going to start off with the robot's head and come up here to the poly modeling box. Now, if you don't have your screen looking exactly like this, um, then a good way to reset things is to pop up here to your Windows menu and go to Workspaces and make sure Maya Classic is selected. If that is selected, but your view still doesn't look like this, Go to Workspaces, make sure Maya Classic is selected, and then go down to this thing here that says Reset Maya Classic to Factory Default. When you select that, it will reset the windows to look exactly like the one that's in front of you now on your screen. Make sure also that you're using Autodesk Maya 2018. There shouldn't be too much differences in um, a newer version, but um, we want to try and keep this as, as simple as possible. So let's create our robot's head. Up here you've got something called the Poly Modeling tab. You can see that there are different tabs here we can click on which give us different sets of buttons. The one we want is Poly Modeling and these buttons along here are what we call primitives. These are basic shapes. So we're going to create a cube and that's going to be our robot's head. Okay, at the moment our robot's kind of in the middle of the world. Um, if you hold down your Alt key or your Option key and then click your left mouse button, you can rotate your uh, perspective view around like this. Um, and if you use your um, mouse scroll wheel, you can zoom in or zoom out. You can also pan around the screen by holding down your Option key and using your middle mouse button to just skip, move that around the place. So the main thing to remember is that if you want to move around your 3D world, use your Option key or your Alt key plus left mouse button, middle mouse button or even right mouse button to zoom in or out. Although. Most people just normally use the scroll wheel to do the zooming in and out. Okay, so once we've got the hang of sort of moving around this space, it's important you've got the hang of that because you'll be doing it a lot, and you've created your cube, we can um, start to modify things a little bit. So let's move our cube up because at the moment our robot's kind of in the middle. We want the head to be up, up higher somewhere. So what we'll do is we'll click on the head here and we're going to click on the Move tool. When you select the Move tool over here, you can actually, um, you'll see these um, little arrows and things pop up and you can grab one of those arrows and move that up. See, the reason we want to grab the arrows here is that when you grab an arrow, it actually um, constrains the movement to that one um, dimension. And when you're working in a 3D space like this, it can be hard to, if we were just to grab something and try to move it up, we'd be moving it around the space in, diff in different dimensions. So by actually being able to move things with these arrows, we can just constrain our movement really easily to just a couple of different axes. Okay, I just press Command Z then a couple of times, or Control Z if you're using a PC. Um, Command Z or Control Z will um, reset, uh, will, will basically do an undo. So it's like most pieces of software you've used before. Okay, so there's our robot's head and we've just moved it up in space. Um, if you've got keen eyes, you may notice over here in this thing called the channel box, you've got this value called translate Y and you'll notice that, that number there changes when you move that up and down. So if we wanted to, we could come over here and we could actually type a number into there. Um, and we could make our object move to a particular place in that, in that space. So translate just means move that object on the X, Y or Z um, coordinates. This move box can also, also has these uh, coloured uh, squares and we can use those to move an object on just two dimensions and not a third one. So this box here, this um, one that I was just clicking on, um, that's yellow at the moment, that will move it on this blue dimension and the red dimension, and that's the um, um, Z dimension and the X dimension, and it won't move it on this up and down dimension. So if we want to move the box left and right but not up and down, I can click it there. And if I want to move the box, say, up and down and left and right but not, uh, and forward and back but not left and right, then I can use this box here like this. Okay, so we'll put it back so that it's back at 3.5. Okay, so that, that's a, uh, a quick summary of that, that tool. We're going to be using these tools a fair bit. Once my robot head's there, um, I want to create the body for the robot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new cube. Now, by default with Maya, when you 
um, create an object, they just get created at a standard size in the middle of the world. So there's my second cube, it's going to be my body. I'm going to just bring this body up um, so that it's around about the right place. And then what I want to do is I want to scale it, right? So I want to make this body a different shape so that it looks more like the robot's body. So I want it to be wider than the head and longer than the head. So uh, let's do that. To do that, we're going to use this scale tool here. I click on the scale tool and I can grab, just like with the move tool, I've got these different handles for scaling in different dimensions. If I want to scale the whole thing, I can click in the middle and make it bigger or smaller, right? And that will scale the whole thing um, evenly in every dimension. But if I just want to scale it in one dimension, I can just grab one of these like this and scale it out. And that's what I want to do here with my body. I just want to make it a bit wider. And then what I want to do is I want to make it taller too. So I'm going to grab this scale here and I'm just going to move that up. Now you'll notice that it scales from the middle um, and that's because my object has its pivot point by default in the middle. I'll show you in a little bit how to change that. So let's just scale him up like this a bit. I don't want it quite that tall. Maybe this sort of size. And then I'm going to go back to my move tool here. So just clicking over here on my move tool. And then I'm going to move that back down. Let's have a bit of a look from the front. I'm going to move this into place. So it's roughly overlapping. doesn't matter if you've still got a bit of a gap there. We can fix that up later. Okay, so there's the start of my robot. Um, maybe I want to give my robot um, a bit of a neck too. So uh, let's see if we can do that. For a neck, I'm going to use a cylinder. So I'm going to click on my polygon cylinder tool over here. And that will create a polygon cylinder for me. So my polygon cylinder has a number of properties. It has a certain number of subdivisions like slices of a pie here. And there's 12 of those. And it also has a certain number of subdivisions running horizontally here. You can see there's six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So it'd be nice if we made this a bit simpler. So let's go over here to our channel editor. And you can see that we've got translate, rotate, scale. And if you come down here to where it says inputs, we can actually click on this word polycylinder one here, and it will bring up the properties for this object. So radius is obviously the size, the height is how tall it is, and then subdivisions axis is how many slices of the pie there are. So if we made this um, eight, for example, then you can see that now it's an octagon rather than a polygon with um, 12 sides. So we've simplified that down. Let's simplify the number of subdivisions in height down to one. So now there's just one subdivision in height. And then what I can do is I can um, start to um, reduce this down to a neck size. So we'll go back to our scale tool. Now instead of clicking on the scale tool over here, a good thing to get in the habit of is to use the shortcut. And you can see here in the, um, in the tool tip that the letter R is the, is the shortcut for it. In fact, if we go up to the move tool here, you'll see that it has a shortcut of W. The rotate tool has a, scale, has a shortcut of E, and this one here has a shortcut of R. So if you keep your left hand over the W, E, and R keys on your keyboard, you'll be able to quickly shift between move, scale, and move, rotate, and scale. Okay, just using your keys on your keyboard. And that's really handy to get into the habit of. So let's go to our scale by pressing R on the keyboard, and we'll just um, scale this down this way and then what we want to do is we want to scale this down so that it's um, smaller in the neck region now I could kind of do it like this and then like this but if I did that chances are I'd be I, I wouldn't get the scale quite right so you can see here that the scale on the X and the scale on the Z are the two we're interested in so the scale on the X is 0.521 and the scale on the Z is 0.536. So they're close, but they're not exactly the same. So to avoid that happening, I just pressed undo a couple of times there. I can either type in two of the same values here, or I can use this little green square here to scale both the Z and the X at the same time while leaving the um, Y axis alone. So that just scales it in like that. 
Okay, so that's about the size I want the neck to be. So I'm just going to make it a little bit thinner. And then press my W key on my keyboard, right, to go back to the Move tool. W key and move that guy up. Okay, so now my robot's got a little neck there. If I want to, I can press the uh, 4 key on my keyboard and I can um, see that we've got a wireframe view. So basically I can see through my object at the, um, at the little parts that are making it up. And then if I press the 5 key on my keyboard, it will go to solid display again. So you can toggle between these two with 4 and 5 on your keyboard. Okay, so there's, my, um, there's the start of my robot. Let's give my uh, robot um, an arm now. So let's uh, come in here and we'll click on a sphere and we'll use this as the shoulder. So this is our, our sphere object. Again, if I wanted to, I could come in here and I could change some details about the subdivisions. Um, this sphere has 20 subdivisions in its axis and its height. Um, and we could make that less if we wanted to, but we'll just leave it at 20 for now. The main thing we want to do is we want to resize that, right? We want to make it a bit smaller. So we're going to click on our scale here or press the E key on your keyboard, sorry, the R key on your keyboard. And in this case, we don't want to scale it in any dimension except all of them at the same time. So we don't want to like distort our sphere in any way. So we're going to click in the middle here and we're just going to scale it down until it's about the right size. It's a little bit hard to judge from this angle whether that's the right size or not. I could just sort of move around to the side here, but a really easy way to do this is if you press your space bar, just, just touch your space bar, don't hold it down, it will switch to this four view mode. This is the same thing as clicking this button over here. This four view mode lets us see our object from perspective, which was our main view before, but also from a front view and, sorry, a front view here, a top view here, and a side view over here. And sometimes when you're modeling, it's really useful to be able to see these other views. So sometimes people like to model in these four views. Sometimes people like to model in a full screen view over here. It just depends what you're modeling and what you're doing. In this case, we want to see that our sphere is about the same radius as the width of, this, of the body. So what I'll do is I will zoom in here a bit. And then I'll just grab this one and I'll just move it in a bit. Sometimes if you want to make it precise, you can have a look at the, um, the body over here and you can see that the um, um, we can't see exact details about the size of the body, but we can kind of guess here that this is actually looking like it's really close to 0.5. It's 0.489. So chances are if we made this scale 0.5 for all of these, we'd have the right sized um, sphere that we're looking for. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change each of these to 0 0.5. Now I can come through here and I can sort of go 0 0.5. Whoops, made that 5. Let's make that 0 0.5. And I could click on each one of them individually and make them 0 0.5 like that. But a cool thing you can do in Maya in this um, channel box is you can actually like select, click and drag, or click and um, just click and drag in here like this. And you can just type in 0.5 in one of them and it'll make all of them 0.5, which is really quick and easy. Okay, so now I've got my sphere at about the size I want it to be. Let's move it into position. So W key to get the move tool here. And then we'll just move this guy across a bit. And we want him to be kind of aligned here with the side of, of my box. And we'll move that up. So it's just in position there like that. Let's say we wanted to go back into our full screen view again. We can just move the mouse over one of our four windows and that window will become full screen. So if I wanted to go back to my perspective view over here, I can just move my mouse over this perspective window and tap the space bar and I'll go back into my full view. Tap the space bar again, I go back to the full view. And if I wanted to make, say, my front view my full view, then I can put my mouse over this one, tap my space bar, and now I'm in this one. So you can easily switch between these different views just by tapping on your space bar. It's really quick. Okay, 
so I've created my um, sphere there, which is going to be my robot's um, shoulder. So now I need my uh, robot to have an um, arm coming out of that shoulder. So uh, let's uh, create another cube. And we're going to make that cube the arm here. Now I'm not going to go through in detail how I do this because it's really exactly the stuff we've done before. Um, really what I want to do here is I want to make this, uh, I'm going to make this like smaller. Then I'm going to make it a bit longer this way. And then I'm going to move it across and up. And that's about where I want my that's about where I want my arm to be on my robot. Then I might give my robot a little hand as well. So I'm going to grab another little cube and I'm going to move this one across into roughly the right position. And you can see here how these three different views are really useful for lining things up. And then I'm going to just line that up there nicely like that. And um, I might actually just uh, make the hand a little bit um, smaller than the arm. So I'm going to uh, use my scale. Um, but, but I want to keep it as a cube, so I'm going to use that little um, controller in the middle. Okay, so there's my robot with an arm and a hand. Now, I could do exactly the same thing on this side over here, but... Um, Probably the easiest way to do that is for me to um, just copy what I've already got here and, and move it over there. So what I can do is I can, um, let's first of all, um, um, let, let's leave that for now. We'll come back to that in a second. Let's uh, make the rest of the robot. But we're just going to focus on the left-hand side of the robot because um, once we go through and we've created our um, left-hand side, the right-hand side will be pretty easy to do. So. For the robot's um, for the robot's uh, lower body, I want to I'm going to use another cylinder. I'm just making this up as I go. There's no right or wrong way to build a robot. You could make it out of any shapes you want. Um, this cylinder here is is actually in the wrong. It's actually rotated in the wrong way. So I actually want to rotate this one on its side. So I'm going to use the E key to get my rotate tool, and I'm just going to rotate that around like this. Now I want that rotation to go to 90 degrees, so I could type it in over here. But another thing you can do is you can press the J key on your keyboard. And while holding down the J key, you can rotate that guy, right? And you can see it's snapping to 15 degree increments as it rotates. So that lets me like quickly and easily just rotate it to 90 degrees. And then once I've got it rotated to 90 degrees, I'm going to use my... Um, use my scale tool, use my R key, and then I'm going to scale it down. Now in this case, it's pretty close to the right width, it's just the wrong height and the wrong um, depth. So I'm going to use this green tool here to just scale that guy in. And then W key, move it up. Alright, so How's my robot looking? Let's uh, pop back over to here and let's zoom in a bit. Let's use my um, option key and my middle mouse button just to drag this around a little bit. And then I can sort of have a look around my object. Maybe I'll click off here. Okay, so when you've got an object selected, if you want to deselect it, you can just click somewhere else. Um, you'll find that sometimes it gets annoying when you click on an object and you have this controller there because we've got the move tool selected and you want to select this tool here, the select tool to make that controller go away so you can just easily see what's going on. So one way if you've got the move controller on or a scale or rotate controller on and you want to get rid of it, click up here and the quick key for that is the Q key. So Q W E R basically gives you Q W E R. So Q key, and we can just select between them. Okay, so our robot's looking okay. Let's give him a couple of legs, or at least one leg on the left side. So um, back to my four view here. Create a new cube. Um, and this time I want the cube to be a leg. So I'm going to want it to be um, a little bit narrower. So let's um, zoom in over here. Let's use my W key and sort of move it across a bit so I get a sense of how wide it needs to be. Um, then my R key, just 
scale it in a little bit here. W key again and move it across and then up and I want my leg to go into here. Now what I want to do at this point is I want to make the leg longer just like I did with the torso and if I go into my scale key like this I can scale that up and then I'll have to move it down into position. It'd be kind of cool if I could just scale this and have it grow only in one direction and one way you can do that is to change the pivot point. So I mentioned this briefly before. You'll notice that with all of my objects that I've created so far, the pivot point or the point at which the move or scale or rotates tool works is centered in the middle of the object. And you can see that here with our, our um, leg object that we created. Sometimes you don't want it to be centered there. So for example, sometimes you might want to rotate an object and you might want it to rotate around one of the corners instead of the center. So to fix that, you want to change its pivot point. The easiest way to change an object's pivot point is to hold down the D key and then just move that pivot point to where you want it to be. Okay, so just again, you can move into any of your tools, move or, or rotate or scale, and then hold down the D key on your keyboard. And you'll see what happens when you hold down the D key. I'm not clicking any buttons at the moment, just holding down the D key, and you can see that I can move but instead of moving the object around I'm actually moving its pivot point to a new place. Another way you can move the pivot point is you can actually move it by um, you can actually snap it to different objects but for now um, we'll just use that move tool. So I've moved it up to the top of the object here it's still centered when we look at it from the top but when we look at it from the front it's right at the top of that object and now if I go into my scale tool you'll see my scale tool is now at the top of the object and when I scale this, it will scale the bottom of the object down, which makes it a bit easier for me to um, create that leg there like that to the length that I want it to be. Okay, so there's my leg and let's just give him a foot now. So um, we will um, go back to our, we'll press a Q key, go back to our select tool and we're going to grab a box and uh, Let's grab that box, the W key. Now I could move it using my arrows or I could just grab this box in the middle there and just move it down into position. And then my scale again. And then what we want to do is have a look at it from the side because at the moment my robot doesn't really have much variation in uh, how he looks from the side. So let's give him, let's make his foot a bit wider. And then let's uh, move it forward a little bit. Yeah, let's move it back, let's move it forward there. Okay, so how does that robot look? It's a good idea to keep swinging around any 3D object you're making and just have a look at it in perspective so you've got a sense that it's doing the right thing. Okay, so I've got my robot basically worked out now. Let's um, have a quick look at, um, we'll, we'll duplicate his arm and his leg in a moment, but the first thing I want you to do, um, be aware of is um, parenting. So parenting is something you're going to do quite a bit when you're working in 3D, especially when you move into animation. Parenting allows us to um, basically connect two objects to each other so that a child object will move with the parent object. So a really good example of that is the head. If we wanted this head to have eyes, we need two cylinders for the eyes and we're going to have to um, move them into place, but we want the eyes to move when the head moves. So we want the eyes to be children of the head. So I'll show you how to do that really quickly. First of all, let's create a cylinder. And what we're going to do is we're going to simplify our cylinder. So we're going to go to our cylinder, the poly cylinder 3 over here in the channel box. We're going to change its subdivisions axis down to 8 and the height subdivisions down to 1. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of things to this. We're going to um, just um, move our view down and zoom in a bit because we're going to be working with the head. And what we're going to do is we're going to scale this so that it's quite narrow. And we're also going to scale it in the um, in the X and Z dimensions so that it's smaller because it's just an eye we're trying to make here. 
Oops, didn't want to do that. Okay, we'll just scale that down a bit there. Okay, so now we've got an eye. And now what we want to do is we want to rotate it so that it's in the same it's it's um in the same dimension as the head so what we'll, we'll do here is we'll press our um, e key to rotate and we'll just rotate this 90 degrees so i'm going to hold down the j key and just rotate that until it's like that okay so we can see the eye there now we're going to have a bit of a problem here and i'll show you what that problem is as i move this eye up into the right place you can see that it's now in the kind of middle of the object that's okay. We can now move it. Um, we now want to move it sort of forward in the head so that we can see it. But one of the things you'll notice here is that as we move that out, it's right in the middle of the head there. We can move it to the left or we can move it up a little bit maybe until we get the head where we want it to be. The problem is that when we're looking at it front on, when we don't have anything selected, it's kind of disappeared. We can't really see it there. It is there, we can see it in this view and we can definitely see it in our 3D view if we have a look around it. But it's a bit hard to see from front on because its shading is exactly the same as the shading behind it. A Couple of things we can do here. We can use our 3D view to select it if we want to select it again. Or we can temporarily just pop our front view here into wireframe view by pressing the four key. So move your mouse over the, over the front view and then press the 4 key to go into wireframe view and then we can clearly see it there. 5 key takes you back to um, normal view. Okay, so there's one eye. Now what we want to do is we want to have um, a second eye on here. So I could go through and I could create, click on here on the polygon cylinder again and then do all the things I've just done, but there's a much easier way to do it. If you go up to your edit menu, you'll see there's something here called duplicate, command D. So all we have to do is select our object, press Command D or Control D if you're using a PC, and then drag across and you'll see that we've just duplicated that object. We've got two copies of that object there. Again, you can't see it so well um, because of, we're not in wireframe view, but when we put it back to wireframe view, you can see it quite easily. Okay, so there are our two eyes that we've got on. Okay, so our robot has eyes. Now, I said before that what we wanted to do was um, play around with this idea of um, parenting. So the reason we want to parent this is that later on, if we want to, say, rotate our um, robot's head, okay, so we'll just press E to go into rotate. If we rotate our robot's head, the eyes are going to stay in the same place. What we really want to have happen here is for the eyes to rotate with the head. So what you do is you select your left eye and... Hold down your shift key and select the right eye. Now, if you're like me, when you when you select that, we're in the rotate object, we're in the rotate tool, and that means it's really hard for me now to select that without rotating something. So go back to your selection key up here, or press Q on your keyboard, and that will get rid of the, the tool. So there we go, we've selected both of the eyes, and then we select the head, shift select the head. Now you'll notice that when you do this, you select the first thing and it's green, you select the second one and the second thing goes green, but the old one that you had selected stays white. And then again, the last one you select is green. So only one of your objects can be green at any one time. When an object's green, it means it's the kind of active object. It's the object that um, is operations are going to happen to. So if we want to parent these two eyes to the head, we make the head green and anything that we want as children of the head to be white. So in this case, we don't want, say, that one eye to be green because that will mean that the head and this eye get parented to that eye. What we want to have is both of our eyes selected and the head green. And once you've done that, you just need to very quickly um, press your P key. Now I'm not exactly sure where this is in the menus, probably under um, um, one, there it is, parent under the edit menu, it's just the P key. So what we're going to do is press the P key on our keyboard and you'll see now that if I select the head, all of those objects are selected. I can still select the eyes independently, but if I select the head, all of those objects are selected. And furthermore, if I now go into the rotate tool, you'll see that the eyes will move with the head as well. They're all connected to each other. Okay, so let's um, do a similar thing with our um, 
other body objects. So let's take our arm here because we might want to um, pose the arm in some way. The object that we want parented here is the shoulder. So we're going to select the hand and then the upper arm and then the shoulder. The shoulder with, is green. We're going to press P. I'll create a parent there. And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to select the, um, the foot and the leg. And we want the, the upper leg to be the, um, the parent object. So we're going to press P here as well. Okay, now there's one other thing that's um, usually a good idea when we're working with um, objects like this. You'll see that, um, I'll just um, undo what I've just done. So press your undo key a couple of times and we'll go back um, so that these things aren't parented anymore. So we'll just undo, 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 undo. Oh, I haven't gone back quite far enough yet. Okay, so you can see I've undone all the parenting here. Now, if we have a look at each of these objects here in our in our um, in our model, you'll see that they've got values here other than zero or one. So you can see that the scale's been changed, and we can see here that we've scaled our our um, sphere to 0.5 and so on. Sometimes these scale values here can cause problems when we do parenting later on. So it's always a good idea with your objects before you parent them is to um, do something called freeze transformation. So when you freeze a transformation, you just click this button up here. It looks like um, a little uh, sort of icicle or snowflake. Um, when you click on that, watch what happens. Watch these uh, values over here. So you can see there's a whole bunch of random values in there at the moment. And when I click freeze, what happens is they all get turned back to default values, but my object stays in the state it was. So what we're basically doing when we freeze transformations is we're saying to Maya, hey, this object isn't a cube anymore. It's just the thing, it's, it's like some sort of rectangular prism with all these um, things applied to it and then reset all these to zero. So we want to do that with each of our objects before we um, start parenting them to avoid kind of weird things going on later on. Now you can actually just select everything. If you want to select everything you can click and drag like this and draw a box around everything or you can go up to your edit menu and go uh, sorry your select menu and go select all it'll select everything um, usually it's a good idea to just drag around just so you don't accidentally select things that are elsewhere and then we'll just go freeze and that will freeze so now if we go through all of our objects you'll see all of our objects have the same zeros and ones on it, their transformations and scales Okay, and that makes our job a lot easier. Okay, so let's do our parenting now. So click, shift click, shift click, P for parent, click, shift click, P for parent. Okay, so now when that's parent, now that that's parented, obviously if I want to rotate the arm, then I can just rotate it like this. And the um, hand and everything moves as well. Um, also, it means that if I move that part of the arm, if I move the shoulder, I can move the whole thing like that. So next thing I want to do here is um, I'm going to want to create an arm and a leg on the other side. So if I select this top one here, I can just use my duplicate key, right? So um, control D or edit uh, duplicate. And that will give me a copy of the arm just like that and then I can just uh, go in here and rotate that around and um, to the appropriate amount and then I can just stick it on the other side so that's one way I could do it another way I could do this is that so I just undid all that the other way I can do this here is that I can go up to edit and I can go um, duplicate special and you'll notice that some of these menu items have little boxes next to them. Menu items with boxes next to them mean that when you click on the box, you'll get a uh, menu uh, that will pop up with extra options for that, that tool. In this case, what I can do is I can go duplicate special and I can say, make a copy of my arm here. 
and I can do a transform to it. I can choose like, I could for example make six copies of my object if I want. I can change its scale values and so on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave all of these values at zero, but I'm going to make its rotate. I'm going to make it rotate 180 degrees. All right, so that should turn it around the other way. So there we go. Click duplicate special, and now what I should have is an object that's been rotated. Now mine didn't rotate and. I've probably rotated it around the wrong axis, maybe. It's weird. What's the matter? Turn that back to zero there. Um, we'll go back and I'll just do that again. Let's see if I can work out what the problem is. Um, okay, so let's try that again. Edit, duplicate, special. Rotate 180 degrees on the Y axis, that looks correct. Number of copies, one. Oh, I had a, had a minus one on the scale here. So if you scale something by a um, negative amount it's the same as flipping it so if we scale it by a negative amount on that on on that x value it's going to flip so what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave that at, at one so it's one of the problems when you you forget to zero out everything from the last time you did something okay so we're going to leave this at 180 make sure all of our scale values are one uh, go duplicate special and then move our duplicated object over there and there you can see it's done what i expected it to do move that into place there and then we'll do the same thing here Edit, duplicate special. Again, make sure the scales are all one, 180 degrees. Apply, and we'll move that guy across there like that. Okay, now this time I've actually flipped this one, but you'll notice if we have a, if you can look carefully, you'll see that his feet are actually, that's actually flipped him around like that, which is actually not what I wanted. I just wanted it to be kind of duplicated. So let's um, undo my duplicate special. Um, and then what I'll do is I will just do a straight duplicate here, Command D, and move that one across. And I'm looking down here to see if I've moved it into the right position. It's a bit hard to see from my 3D view. Okay, that's nice, right? So we've got our, um, got our arms here. They're all nicely parented. Um, and I've got my legs and because I put my pivot point for my legs up the top here if I um, wanted to um, move a leg now I can actually just go into my um, E key here and I can like move the whole leg and because it's parented the foot's going to move with it okay and there we have it there's my um, little robot if I wanted to I could also um, parent everything to the chest okay so if I come in here Q key and I want my chest to be the main selected one in the middle which has happened by default but if yours isn't then you can just um, click the chest a couple of times to get it to be the um, green object and then press P and then that's what that's going to do is it's going to parent everything to the chest and that means that if I want to move my whole robot I can just click on his chest and then I can move him somewhere. If I want to just move, move a leg, then I can just click on a leg. And if I want to move an arm, I can click there. And if I want to move the head, I can click there. Because remember, we parented the um, eyes to the, um, to the head. Okay, so um, there's my little robot. This is not a good way to model an object. Um, there's all sorts of reasons this is a bad way to model an object. But it shows that just using a few of the simple tools in Maya, we can um, go ahead and make something. And the main point of this exercise is not really to build something, but it's really to just get the hang of understanding how we can use the basic tools in Maya. Um, so that when we go on to do more advanced stuff in the next um, week, we'll be able to do that without too much trouble at all. 
So there's a few things we've learned about here. Um, there's a few other things I'd like you to learn and I'll make a quick video about those as well. Um, but um, pretty much if you can follow through and replicate this exercise, then um, you're um, by the end of week one, then you're in a good place to keep moving forward um, with the assignment. In this video, we're going to make a little robot that looks like this. This is a badly designed robot. I just made him up as I went, um, but uh, you'll be able to see how to make him um, and uh, learn some of the tricks along the way that will allow you to do things like pose the robot um, in different ways and uh, do fun stuff with it.